Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, we're back again, and wow, I had a really great weekend, but now I feel like there's a lot of stuff I have to catch up on, including going over this Amberlynn Reed channel rebrand, rebrand, talking about some things that, <laughs> that, Amberlynn posted about me on Instagram, also just reacting to her most recent video. So we, we have a lot to cover. We're gonna try to get to all of it. And of course, I'll leave timestamps for each of those different sections so you can skip around to whatever might make the most sense for you. But before we get to all of that, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Scentbird. I have loved working with Scentbird over the past, like, I don't know, year or so. I, I've worked with them many times and appreciate that they continue to support our channel. And this month they sent me three new scents uh, to check out. And I enjoy their service because for me personally, I haven't, as I've said in previous videos, always been somebody who wears a lot of fragrances. I feel like it gives me a chance to try out different scents without fully committing to a full size bottle of fragrance. They send each of the scents in these little vials that just twist up. You can also take them out and check them out. This one in particular is Well Played by Confessions of a Rebel, which is a brand I like a lot because they like to make their scents work for either gender. It's a lot of unisex scents, a lot of scents that I personally like the smell of. So Well Played has scents of lavender, bergamot, tonka bean, incense, and cocoa seed, and I really do just enjoy this particular scent. They also sent me Harlem Nights by Chris Collins and Abercrombie and Fitch Fears, which totally sends me back to like the early 2000s of going to the mall and smelling the Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, so lots of great options to try, figure out what you like the best, and move forward with a scent that, that works for you. So if you're interested in trying Scentbird out, you can use my coupon code for 55% off, which makes it a little over $7 for your first month of Scentbird. Like I said, I really enjoy using Scentbird myself. I like to put the little vials in my little, my little belt bag when I'm out and about, so if I need a little refresher, so I can smell fresh and clean for folks, then I can do that, you know? So thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. And once again, make sure to use my code down below for 55% off your first month and get your subscription for just a little over $7 available in Canada and USA. Thanks so much, Scentbird. Now let's get back to uh, the Amberlynn read of it all. So a number of you sent me several <laughs> screenshots of Amberlynn uh, talking about me and her Instagram Q and A's. Honestly, I did go and check through Judy's account to see some of these on my own uh, after they were sent to me. And she, listen, she, <laughs> I'm sure it really takes her no time at all to answer like, a hundred of these questions at a time, but there's just so many slides on her Instagram stories where she's just answering all these questions. So you really have to like do a deep dive if you want to go find any particular specific question that she's answering. I'll read you the posts and then I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. So let me just start there. So the very first one that referenced me, because she was also talking about like Young Dumb Honey Bun and all kinds of other nonsense, but the one that, first one that referenced me, somebody said, do you ever watch Zachary Michael's videos? He gives you some very honest advice. And her response was, no, I do not. With him making fun slash making light of my eating disorder recovery with a stupid famous bull mukbang clickbait, he can kiss my ass. So that was the first one. And then somebody followed up and said, Zach was parodying your food nervousness, not your ED, by the way. And she said, his title speaks otherwise. I don't know, we could talk more about this as we go. And then there was one last one that I saw at least. I don't know if she posted more after that. I was busy living my life this weekend. I went to St. Louis. I saw Legally Blonde the Musical at the Muni. And I also played softball. I've 
I've been busy. But the last one was, Zachary also compliments you in some of his videos. You just assume everyone is a hater. And her response was, I disagree with some of the things he does, just like he disagrees with a lot of the shit I do. I actually, the last time she brought me up, I can't remember where it was. I think it might have been a Snapchat comment or something. I don't know. I spent a lot of time being overly critical of myself, uh, trying to take some level of like responsibility for things that I could or couldn't uh, take responsibility for, right? Like, there's probably a world in where my video, where I was eating a KFC chicken bowl, could be perceived as... I don't know, like mocking her eating disorder. You know, I don't know if it's helpful because I think regardless, I, and I think this is something I'm realizing just like a lot lately when it comes to any any kind of like feedback about my videos, there will be on the same exact video somebody who thinks I'm too critical of Amberlynn and somebody who thinks I wasn't critical enough. And I kind of feel that way with the way that she views and feels about me <laughs> because the last time I brought her up or she brought me up and I made a video about it, it was like a week or two later that she posted on one of these Q&A things that she felt like I was a, a harmless reaction channel. And granted, she's allowed to change her mind, but that came right after she had just said that I was a bully, and then she followed it up a few weeks later with her saying that I was harmless, and now once again she's like mad that I am, uh, I don't know, mocking something like her eating disorder. It's one of those situations where I don't know that I could ever win <laughs> in terms of like making content that she does or doesn't like, that's fine. And also she doesn't have to like my content. I think the other thing that's like frustrating about it is that she doesn't seem to have watched the actual video to know that I don't talk about or bring up her, her eating disorder in that video at all. And in fact, whenever I do talk about her eating disorder in other videos, like I'm always very supportive I'm always very encouraging of her to like seek the help and continue getting the help that she says she's getting. It's an uninformed opinion. And I mean, like we could also talk about like she's mad that I'm clickbaiting with that title and the thumbnail that I had, but it like is almost an exact replica of what she did. I don't know. Amberlynn's welcome to be critical of my content just as I am critical of hers. And if she didn't like something, that's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I wouldn't expect her to like most of my content because she doesn't like being held accountable or taking responsibility for her actions either. You know? You know what I'm saying? So it's fine. So then we get to the video that she posted on Friday. I was in a car on my way to St. Louis on Friday, so I definitely just watched it for the first time today, and I took some notes. We're not gonna do like a full true reaction to it, but I did take some notes because Amberlynn Reed is rebranding her channel. And she did get a new intro and outro, which I love. I've been missing the intros and outros just because they're always so fucking extra and <laughs> kind of tacky and, and kind of annoying. But on the, on the scale of like, one, two, you can try it again, yeah, that song, like, this one's pretty mediocre. Actually, I could have used a more annoying song in the intro, to be honest with you. She's also starting to share the dates, so that video in particular was filmed throughout July 13th and 14th, which is not as far back as I was anticipating her being. But yes, she does welcome us to her first vlog ever. Uh, okay, so welcome to the first vlog. Like, hi. And you know what? If there's something Amber Lynn Reed is gonna do, it's gonna be labeling something on her channel, titling a video on her channel, vlog one, episode one, as though it's the first time she's ever done that and get really excited about starting something new. She also has a breasticle moment. I thought my phone just vibrated. Someone told me not to leave it in my breasticle area because like breast cancer. And there's some weird things where she's talking about how people think that her vlogs are boring or that she's boring and she contradicts herself. No two lives are the same, okay? You know, every single vlogger that I watch, their vlogs are just like mine. 
so it doesn't make me feel too bad. Like, how are you going to say no two people's lives are the same, which agreed, that's true, uh, that's true, but then be like, well, all the other vloggers I watch do vlogs just like mine. Like, you're either different and quirky and weird and unique, or you're just like everybody else. Like, which is it, bestie? Which is it? I mean, I think we all know that Amber Lynn just uses whatever logic and argument that will support whatever she's trying to do or accomplish. I'm also confused because she just keeps saying, like, I'm now I'm a, a vlog channel. Now I'm just a vlog channel. So this is me rebranding into a just vlog channel and it's like bestie what what would you have called yourself before this because you used to not be a weight loss channel you it's always been about you just vlogging your life and weight loss is a part of it so like what would you say you were prior to this this particular video we do get some stuff cleared up about wifey taking a vacation from her job. I think a lot of people on my last video seemed to be concerned that wifey had left in some capacity because they saw the vacation thing on the calendar that Amber Lynn had up in her office. And I think it was just that. I think it was just the vacation. But so many people are like, Zach, aren't you concerned that wifey's gone? And I somehow, you know, I don't always see the same things as y'all. So I was like, I don't know what y'all are talking about. And I think this clears it up. And y'all, she just loves to pour things from one container into another container into another container. And I just really don't fucking understand it. Like, why do we have to dirty this mug? I'm gonna pour it in here first, just so I can measure like how much I actually truly want, so I can see what I'm doing. Some ice, and then I'm gonna pour the coffee. I didn't want to pour the coffee first because it's like boiling, and I know it's not gonna melt this, but that's how my brain works. It's asinine. And Amber Lynn says what a lot of us think about the work she does on YouTube. But I call it a head because I'm doing more work. Crazy that this is work, am I right? Yeah, it's so crazy <laughs> that this is a lot of work for you. And she also shares with us what her favorite time of day is. Favorite time of the day. Getting my coldest water bottle filled with ice and water. Wow, what? A fucking thrill. And of course, it's not an Amberlynn Reed video if she doesn't talk about how the lighting makes her look bad. Okay, the lighting is making me look unwell or like I'm going through an interrogation. Bestie, you look the same as you do every other fucking day on this channel. I kid you not. If I'm lying, I'm dying, bestie. The rest of the video is a grocery haul where she hauls a bunch of snacks, even though it was just like last week in real time that she was saying she stopped snacking. So I don't know if this was before or after that in the timeline. And generally she shows her meal prepping and stuff like that. And I'm proud of her for doing that. I think that can be helpful. The food looked bland as fuck. It looked like there was no seasoning whatsoever. But I think that that could be helpful for her. So like, way to go. Way to go, bestie. And she ends the video with like talking about a book she's gonna read, which is the, the book called A Little Lie and she shares that like lots of people have told her that there's lots of trigger warnings for the book and I am just like yeah like how would you did you not read like a synopsis of this book or like the the back cover or the inside cover to find out like what this was even going to be about like I thought she said that it was recommended to her by some youtuber she watches and I'm just like why wh why did you not buy or why did you not look some of this stuff up before you bought this book to realize that there would be all kinds of like trigger warnings because I would think that would be something you would do, you know? I don't know, it seemed really weird to me. And yeah, that was about it. I mean, that was all of the, the highlights. So <laughs> there you go, besties. And of course that brings us to today's video, which we are going to react to. It's called, I've been keeping things from you. Ozempic week one, health, etc. Vlog two, the second ever vlog on the Amberlynn Reed YouTube channel. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I will say at the end of the the last video she also talked about how she did have some like serious health updates and things to share with us. I'm vaguely familiar with Ozempic but I'm not like an expert. I actually first learned about it when Chantal started taking it like a year and a half ago or I don't know. At the beginning of the downfall of Chantal's channel, she was taking Ozempic, but I don't really know a whole lot about it. I'm, I'm happy to learn from Amberlynn. Y'all know when it comes to her health stuff, I, I don't have too much to say unless it's like getting frustrated when she blatantly just like ignores the advice of a health professional. But here we are. <laughs> Here we are. So let's just get to get to, shall we? Hello. Hey. Welcome to a new vloggity vlog. Whoop whoop. Hey. 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 Okay, you guys. See, that could be so much more obnoxious. Like, I would love for her to, to just lean into the grab my morning coffee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You know, you miss it. I know you miss it. So. Hello. Hi, okay, July 16th. I'm currently not wearing a bra. Let's normalize that, okay? We're in the safety of our home, but I decided to put my hair down just in case. I honestly wouldn't have known that your your breasticles were not in a bra had you not said anything. Honestly, truly. Like this is, you tell on yourself. You tell, <laughs> you tell on yourself, bestie, because I wouldn't have known nor probably paid attention unless potentially, you know, you did the camera angles where you were shooting from from this angle, you know? People are triggered. Speaking of triggered, I have officially started a little life. Uh-huh. There's over 700 pages, but what makes it even better? What's that? I got a damn Kindle. Stop. <laughs> in the last vlog, I was like, I need a Kindle. Stop. Yeah, I for I forgot about that in the last vlog. She did. She talked about getting a Kindle and how difficult it was to decide if she wanted a white or black moment. I got the really tiny one, and it's white. Um, I love it. Okay. So I actually started this on my Kindle, uh, and I got perfect, a perfect. page. Perfect. 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 I, I love I love buying an actual book and then just deciding to get a Kindle and not use the actual physical book that I bought. See, this is nitpicking. You gotta you gotta let go and let God, Zachary. Let go and let God. I'm still trying to get like used to using this. I'm on page 26. Oh but my gosh. I have started it. Oh god. So that's all you need to know because nothing that interesting has like. Happened. Well, yeah, Bestie, you're only 26 pages into a 700 page book. What the fuck do you think is gonna happen? You're you're in the fucking exposition portion of it. You're just learning about all the characters probably or all the people in it. Spoiler alert, I guess. One of them has like really bad legs. <laughs> Relatable. So, so funny. So, what? <laughs> like, what are you? doing? Also, how is it a spoiler if it happens and you find out about it in the first 26 pages of the book? What I am about to do, oh, I also got a new, um, what should we call it? Memory card, but I haven't put it in here, so definitely need to do that what? because this is already <laughs> glitched. <I'm just laughs> That's so funny to me also because I didn't talk about this in my recap of the last vlog, but she spent a lot of time talking about how her memory card wasn't working, how she had to refilm stuff because the memory card wasn't working, and so she said once she got done filming, she was gonna go order a new memory card from Amazon, and it's just wild to me that, like, she got a new one, but she'd still rather take a chance on having to refilm things because she's too lazy to go put the new memory card in her camera. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Just like genuinely hoping that it's not the camera that's broken because I'm not trying to spend $800 on a camera right now. Like Girl, you just bought a Kindle for funsies. $800 on a camera is an investment in your channel. Like, that's what I don't get. Like, not that every purchase has to be something that is benefiting your job or things like that, but like, what what's the problem with investing in better technology or things that work? I mean, if the, if the camera is not working, into your job. Plus, you could probably write that $800 camera off on your taxes. I just don't understand. I got this container for this, like, 
drawer situation I have next to my desk uh -huh. that I keep like my journals in, books, just important things sure. that I use kind of on the daily and I was going to use this for like, you know, my pens and things like that. When I tell you it's literally only like a centimeter or two too big, you think I was being punked. Like, literally. You, you're, you're the only punked that's happening is you to yourself. You punked yourself. You played yourself. Fucking use a measuring tape. Bestie, that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. Why wouldn't you measure the drawer that you bought the container for? Girl, you punked yourself. Really, I was so excited. I was like, that's perfect, but it's too big, so I have to use it for something else. So I've decided, because my earrings are not organized at all, they're just like how, this. How do your earrings constantly go from a state of organized to unorganized to organized to unorganized? I've watched you fucking organize these damn earrings on your channel so many times. How do they, how do they end up back in this state? So I figured I can organize these. And if you guys are new here, I used to run like a whole like small business of um, <laughs> earrings. So not her, not her calling her failed attempt at reselling her crusty earrings as a small business. Girl, it lasted also for like a week. So don't, don't, don't even try it. Those are like nothing compared to what I have. Small business lasted about a month. Love oh, a month. I used to collect earrings. That are, that's literally nothing. I got you. Them. You didn't collect earrings. You bought earrings in bulk. You bought like four hundred pairs of earrings in bulk, and then you decided you probably shouldn't have that many, and you decided to sell them. I kind of want to organize it and put them in here. It's just when you have this many earrings, you don't know how to like keep them organized or anything like that. Clearly, because I've watched you organize them 1,200 times at this point, bestie. So, let's do it. So obviously, first things first, I'm gonna take off this little oh, sticker. Okay, that did not go as planned. Why put stickers on here if, uh, okay, never mind. Customers are not always right. Okay, this is just proof. I'm an idiot. Well, okay. love that for me. Well, well, well. So I have no idea how I'm gonna be doing the, this. I feel like this container is not gonna make her earrings any more organized than what they previously were in. Like, how is this going to help organize your earrings, bestie? Um what type of vibe, if I want to do like color coordinated or I don't really know. Yeah, this is the, the fact that she's like thinking about this of like, I don't know what I want the vibe to be. I don't know what I want the aesthetic to be. That's not how you go about. I mean, that's maybe a part of organizing things, but, but like, I feel like the most important thing should be focused in organizing it based on how you use these things. Like, how, which I guess for, for color, like that could be, that could be a way, but I think it's just going to end up with all of these earrings just still piled on top of one another and hard to find like the pairs of earrings you want to wear. You know what I'm saying? Does this seem like she's setting herself up for failure here to anybody else? Cause this seems like a silly thing. And as I sit here looking at all of this jewelry, I realize I don't know who I am as a person. Like, what's my style? What's my vibe? No. Mm -mm. Like, I have dark green fringe. I have Girl. gold snakes, bright pink stuff. Sure. Well, then you're an absolute lie, because you, when you tried on that, <laughs> I don't know why this is what's in my remembrance right now, but do y'all remember when she was trying on the, the parental advisory explicit whatever tank top? from Torrid, y'all remember that? And she said, this is totally my style. Girl, and now you don't know what that style is? A apparently it's the parental advisory explicit shirt. That's your style. <laughs> I mean, I do understand what she's saying because if you look at all of these things, it might be like, who is this girl? What, what girl is wearing all of these different kind of earrings? But also I look at all of this and I do think, wow, that's, some shit that Amber Lynn Reed would wear. So, 
I think this is your style. Okay, you guys, so I have finished. These are the ones that I am getting rid of. Oh, I was like, if you're finished and this is the finished product, <laughs> this still looks like such a fucking mess. And it feels so good. I think I'm just gonna give these to Goodwill, honestly. The Goodwill doesn't want your crusty earrings, bestie. Um, and now here is the completed. Oh, I mean, to deal. that looks. My girl. That does look organized. That looks more organized than I was anticipating. Now it's just a matter of keeping it that way, okay? I think I notice I say type deals when my brain doesn't want to like cooperate and use actual like real words. Here are some studs. Well, then that's kind of all the time, wouldn't you think? Because <laughs> you literally say it all the time. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so update. This all right. is the first clip that I am doing with my new memory card. So... It's wild that we are six minutes worth of clips into this video and she's just now putting this memory card <laughs> into her camera. Hello, welcome. So it's oh, the next day. We I made it to July 18th. As long as these dates are true and she's not lying, like, I feel like she's not as far behind as I thought she was, <laughs> honestly. Like, that was just like a week or two ago, yeah? Yeah? I am currently having a cut up apple that I just cut into fours. This is a caramel premier protein shake in here. There's a lot that I've been keeping from you guys. Yeah, let's hear about it. Tell me more. I don't know, it's like, some things are stupider than others, but it's like, I'm kind of open. So it's like, I feel like I have to like tell you guys these things. Wait, okay, <laughs> it just dawned on me that the premise, because it's in the title, and she just said it, that she's been keeping things from me, but the whole last, like, series, the 500 Pound Girl series that she was doing, was allegedly all of her being, like, open and honest and transparent and vulnerable with us. So, what, <laughs> so what's the truth, then? Were you not that whole time? Or I'm confused, are you just, you just haven't been telling us everything from that like week you took off from filming? I just have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. Let, let me know. Let me know what you're keeping from me. I'm ready to hear it. I'm ready to take it in. First one being, I had an emergency tooth removal. I okay. Um, it was in between the What I Ate Today series and the 500 Pound Girl series. Oh, um, so you really, so you really haven't been super transparent and vulnerable like you were saying. That whole series where you just wanted us to know that you were just, ah, uh, being so raw, you guys. You, <laughs> you were not. You were not. Okay. All right. Okay. Long story short, it's like so weird. After I had my hysterectomy two years ago, I don't know what it was, but I was like obsessed with brushing my teeth. I don't know if like they correlate with one another. I highly doubt it, but I just... I, I yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think being obsessed with brushing your teeth has anything to do with, with getting a hysterectomy. I think most people are obsessed with brushing their teeth and by obsessed, I mean... They just do it because <laughs> that's a thing that they do to take care of their teeth. I just remember waking up from my hysterectomy, like having this urgency to like feel a toothbrush on my teeth. It was so weird. So uh, for a few months after okay. that, I kind of struggled with brushing my teeth several times a day, uh, like seven to 10 times a day. Um, and I would just stand there and just be scrubbing my teeth. It's not that I felt like my teeth were dirty. I didn't feel that uh -huh. at all. It's just I felt like I needed to feel the toothbrush okay. mixed with... Literally, actually, no offense meant by this at all, but, like, is this something you've talked to your psychologist about? Because I feel like there's something you need to unpack there. But also, if you're brushing your teeth all this time, what was going on with this tooth you had to get removed? It feels like she's, like, over-explaining that she does clean her teeth so that she can go into this story about her tooth getting removed so people don't think that she doesn't clean her teeth. You know what I'm saying? Does it feel like that to you? Like a little bit like over defensive <laughs> about how often she brushes? It was so weird. I don't know, but I've ruined my teeth. 
Um, oh. My cheese sensitivity is insane. Oh. Um, even just chewing. I didn't know that's where, oh, so she's telling that story. So I, I read that wrong. She was telling that story to say, like, the constant brushing has made her teeth more sensitive. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, all right, keep going. And this apple is gonna be hard um, because of texture and because of the coldness because I do like to keep my apples in the fridge. I think they taste better when they're cold. So, by brushing my teeth too much, I don't know what happened, but it made one of my teeth up here crack. And I said, excuse me? Um, so my tooth cracked and I started having this horrible... I'm sorry, I, she's talking about this tooth crack, but <laughs> my, my mind is on how she's talking about how her teeth are overly sensitive and even eating a cold apple from the fridge is gonna be too difficult. I'm just thinking about one, how much time we spent on fucking ice on her channel <laughs> in the past like two to three weeks. And two, how many things that she, like she literally just shared a snack in that, that haul video thing from the last video that I recapped where she said, oh, th these are so much better. These snacks are so much better if you put them in the freezer and make them cold. I, it's just not adding up for me. The calculus isn't mathing. The calculus waves, I don't get it. And then I noticed the tooth next to it was getting discolored and I was like, cute, okay. Because I've never had, like, teeth problems. It's not something that I've really dealt with. Okay, first of all, not true. Because <laughs> you have had to have a tooth removed before. I remember because I jump scared people with it uh, in a video where I just popped up the tooth. Because you showed us a picture of the tooth and all the problems with it. I have had a wisdom tooth removed in the past. Obviously that's super common. Oh, but yeah, but it, like the wisdom, the tooth you showed, it wasn't just like a wisdom tooth that was removed per normal. It was like a neglected tooth. I'm not kidding you. I remember this. It happened, it happened like three or four years ago. So I ended up going to emergency dentist because it got so bad that I just, that I couldn't function. The pain was so bad. I literally, half of my brain was not working. They did the x-rays and it turns out it's not the tooth that's chipped that was causing the pain. It's the tooth next to it. I had a horrible abscess. They said, we can't save this tooth. <laughs> So it was honestly so traumatizing because like yeah, well, getting a tooth taken out for me is pretty extreme. Well, I think I think for anybody, yeah, not just for you. I would say for anybody that's like a pretty extreme thing. I mean, it's not like the most extreme procedure, but like lots of people are sensitive about like tooth anything. You know, the tooth has been with me my whole life. You know, oh. Yeah, you kind of see Oh, yeah, you got you got the Chantal looking teeth now. I don't know if anyone's noticed. I don't know if y'all have noticed. I don't know. I have it. But <laughs> yeah, I had not. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm suffering with really bad TMJ. I'm still having horrendous pain. Girl, let's get you a mouth guard. I promise. Wear, wear a mouth guard to bed. Oh my God, it changes everything. I love my mouth guard. <laughs> I talk about my mouth guard on my channel way too much, but I'm just telling you, wear, wear a mouth guard to bed at night. It does wonders to help you. I've been taking ibuprofen daily for okay. over a month. And it's because the pain was so bad. Sure. Um, I can't even explain it to you guys. Like, so bad. I'm not a medicine person, but I was taking ibuprofen daily, twice a day for over a month. And that's not good for you. I know that, so don't follow in my footsteps, please. So by doing that, I have now caused myself to get these massive headaches up in my forehead. If it's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> when I tell you it's not one thing, it's another. The way that she she laughed about the tooth and now she's laughing about this, I mean, I guess we all deal with things in our own way, but like, I don't know, this doesn't feel very funny to me, bestie. It's also so crazy that she was being so raw and vulnerable with us this whole time, but not like letting us in on this part of it. Like, I, I feel like why, especially when you're talking about the troubles that you're having with 
like staying on plan, staying on track, like keeping up with your what I eat in a days and all that. Why wouldn't you also say like I'm struggling with a lot of pain and because of my tooth or like I'm struggling with a lot of pain because I've been having headaches every day. I think a lot of people would understand and that would actually be more relatable if you said like I'm experiencing all this pain and it's making it difficult to stay on track because sometimes when you are in pain it's hard to care about other things like what you put in your body, what you eat, and things like that. You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand if you're being so raw and vul vulnerable this whole time, why that wouldn't be something you would share until after the series where you were apparently being so raw and vulnerable the whole time, you know? So as you guys know, back to the hysterectomy talk, I had a hysterectomy. After I had the hysterectomy, they done told me, so you're they gonna have to take all every day for the rest of your life. So I said, okay, cool. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's just one milligram of estrogen that I would take daily. Okay. And they made it seem like I truly had to take that. So I did, and I have been. I've been taking it for two years now. But when I get a refill, they always do three refills, three months, just call it a day. So I don't have to keep getting it like every single month. So every three months I call to get my refill done. Normally it's smooth, it's smooth running. Sometimes there's a little confusion because uh -huh. for some reason they have my old address still. I keep telling them my new address, like it's just a mess, but that's okay. This time someone new answered and um, he was like, we have no information in our system that you take this medicine. And I was like, I've literally taken it for over two years. And he was like, honestly, my expertise is, I don't know why you're taking this. You shouldn't be taking it. And I was like, what? What? Like I- the, the pharmacist? The pharmacist who just said that he doesn't have any record of you taking that medicine is now providing his expertise to tell you he doesn't think you need to be taking that medicine. Not that like pharmacists can't provide that kind of feedback because I, I do believe they can. But like, why are you trusting that from this, this man you've admittedly never talked to before on the phone or from this pharmacy who seems to have no record of you taking that medicine? Why are you trusting him and not like consulting with your your oncologist or like your primary care physician or whoever whatever you know that like that doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> like that really doesn't make any sense to me not a lick and he was like no people that have had uterine cancer should not be taking this pill and i was like what your office has been having me take this for over two years now all of a sudden i'm a out of the system ma'am uh -huh. and i shouldn't be taking it so he was like, you know what, we're gonna schedule you for an appointment because this is super important. We need to get, you know, you see sure, 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 sure. like why are you taking this? Because you shouldn't be. And I'm like, I'm just following doctor's orders. So well, now right. I'm over here Googling. Well, stop Googling. First of all, reach out to the person you know. Reach out to whoever the doctor that said that you needed to do that to begin with and be like, hey, there seems to be con some confusion. Can you help get this sorted out? For me, that's the logical next step. Oh, I'm talking to a stranger that I've never interacted with before about medicine that I've been taking every day for two years and he says that I shouldn't be taking it. Well, let me go back to the person that I know and have trusted for two years to give me medical care and let's let's see what they have to say about this since they were the ones who suggested that I take this to begin with. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Well, don't go. Oh my God. You, you of all people have no business Googling anything. Google can be a great resource tool in combination with help from your, your healthcare provider. But you know, you have said before that when you go and start Googling stuff, you, you go into a loop. You start getting anxious. So, like, maybe let's not do that. Especially because this is all from a guy you've, you've said you've never talked to prior to this moment. People with uterine cancer shouldn't be taking this pill because it could cause other cancers. I mean, respectfully, that doesn't keep you from microwaving styrofoam. <laughs> <laughs> with your, your cup of noodle. But also, yes, that would be concerning. I would think that would be concerning. But my next thing I want to say okay. is I did recently have a complete 
panel done of my blood okay. and everything came back normal. Oh my God, you guys, when I tell you I was terrified because like when I had cancer, my blood was coming back crazy. Like I had high platelets, my white cell count was super high and like doctors would constantly say, oh, it's just because you have a UTI. Turns out it was cancer, but everything came back normal. Oh, well, good. Everything came back good. normal. Good. I am not pre-diabetic. I was terrified of that. Okay. I don't understand how I'm not because diabetes does run in the family. I have a massive sweet tooth. I am super morbidly obese. Well, so, maybe maybe that sweet tooth just got extracted because you, you did get a tooth extracted. Maybe that was the sweet tooth one. I'm very, very grateful that I am not diabetic. Um, yeah, I'm but wait, now I'm kind of questioning it because I thought that's what Ozempic was for. Because remember, Ozempic week one is in the title. So I, for something was telling me that Ozempic was for that. I know it can be like used for weight loss too, but also I thought it was, I mean, I again, I have no idea. Maybe I'll just let her explain it to me. But I have gone as far as, dun dun dun. Today is gonna be my second shot of Ozempic. Okay. So I have been on Ozempic for a full week. Okay. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, it is an injection for people with diabetes. See, Hold on. See, okay, so I was, I was not wrong. I was not wrong. I was not wrong. Okay, all right. I was like, I feel like I'm going crazy because I thought that that's what that was for. I don't have diabetes. <laughs> it has recently been approved in the United States as a weight loss treatment. So my doctor wanted me to go on this months ago uh -huh. but it's very pricey um it's a thousand dollars about a thousand dollars a month i'm just like also curious if she has health insurance because granted health insurance in america is like such a scam <laughs> i've had like my own horrible terrible experiences with it but I can't imagine, I mean, I guess it could be $1,000 with insurance, but I would think that if you had health insurance, it would at least bring that down a little bit, a little bit. And I'm just, I guess, also speculating on this because in the past she's talked about having to, like, pay for stuff out of pocket and stuff like that. And I just, I would guess that Ozempic would be covered under most health insurances. But again, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, maybe it's not. You know, no, knowing knowing our healthcare system in the U.S., it probably isn't. So I don't know. Wow, a thousand dollars—that is a lot. Very fucking pricey. And but also, maybe maybe get the stuff for your health and not the Kindle. Then maybe get the stuff for your health and not the like twelve orders of takeout every week. <laughs> you know, like I don't know. I feel like. Maybe maybe change some of your priorities a little bit. And I don't like medicine. And you're telling me I have to give myself a shot once a week? Ugh. But I finally took the plunge. Um, okay. Today's Monday. So last Monday, I took the shot. And I was expecting it to work. Bestie, <laughs> uh, ain't nothing work overnight. When you gonna learn that? Not a single thing just magically overnight you lost 1,200 pounds. Okay, that's not how this works. I was expecting to lose my appetite. It did not happen. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's on the 0.25 milligrams, which you do that um, for the first four weeks. And uh -huh. then you go up to 0.5 and then eventually... Supposedly, you're, like, doing 2.4, which is, like, crazy a lot. But we're just taking this slow. Yeah. Please, please just take it slow and give it time to work. I can just envision her just quitting two videos from now because it didn't it didn't work fast enough for her liking. Like, I can just see it coming. I can just see it coming. And it's just, like, you got to give this shit time to work. Please play this back for yourself and listen to yourself where you said, well, I'm going to take it slowly because nothing's going to happen in an instant. I will say I did have some symptoms, though. It's just lack of appetite was not that. So something that Ozempic does is <laughs> TMI. It slows down stomach emptying, so it makes you go to the bathroom less. Okay. And it's true. I have gone poo-poo's in the kitchen. 
Not, not the Chantal poo-poos in the kitchen. The, the way that you continue to associate yourself with this woman after she publicly called you out and denounced you, I do not get it. Uh, please stop. Please stop making a fool of yourself by, like, referencing this woman like you enjoy her content. Stop. Chantel. Speaking of Chantel, I know there was, like, a whole lot of drama, and I said I was, like, yeah. speak about this. Yeah, uh-huh. But, but here you are. Here you are, bestie. I will continue to support Chantel. No. I... You looking like a clown. This is clown behavior. One, that you would support her, and two, that you're even still talking about her. Clown behavior. And three, that you even apologized to not her doodle doo to begin with. Clown behavior, Amber Lynn Reed. Enjoy her as a person, and I will continue watching her. I imagine enjoying Chantal as a person. Imagine clownery. Like, she's the one who invented poop was in the kitchen, and now I can't stop saying it. <laughs> but, um, I, I do like Chantel, regardless Cloud. of what has happened between her and I. Clownery. I continue to support her as well. Clownery. Anyways, so, that's what I was saying. I have... <laughs> Absolute clownery. I have had some, uh, gas, if you will. I'm Come on, really gas. I'm a party person. I'm not. But since I started taking Ozempic, Come on, I have a little bit more than average. I was a little bit bloated for a minute. The first day I took it, there was like a fatigue moment, especially the second day as well. So it was just like random symptoms like that. But like the whole appetite moment hasn't happened yet. Okay. So I did take my second shot today. Please. Have not taken it yet. Please give it time. Please, I'm begging you. Yet. Oh shit, my camera's about to die, so I'm gonna make this quick. I am like figuring out my life. Oh, and I love this. My psychiatrist, I don't know what's going on, but I do take Lamictal and Zoloft, uh, uh -huh. Lamictal for bipolar, Zoloft for anxiety. For some reason, um, they're not answering the phone. I don't know why I poked my eye. Uh, the whole last week, they were not answering the phone and I was trying to get my refill. So I have not been on my medicine in... Oh, God. <laughs> like five days. Oh, I God, like not that. this. So I was doing really good with taking it right. daily, but I have an appointment today, so right. that's good. We're going to get my medicine going. Y'all, I'm just being open, transparent, honest with you guys. Like I'm, I'm just being open, transparent, and honest with you, like I always am, even though I just informed you that I, I all of this stuff happened to me and I never brought it up once on camera, which also not to say that she had to bring any of this stuff up, but she was the one saying that I just am sharing everything about my life. I'm being more open and transparent than I've ever been before. And it's like, no, clearly you weren't. This is my life. Please don't take anything I just told you guys and like twist it, run with it, or use it against me because it's not fair because I'm just trying to be open and honest. I mean, and I'm, I'm not using any of the stuff about your health against you. I th I'm i glad you are getting that stuff sorted out. <laughs> the only thing I will say is like, this this facade of you being open and honest. I mean, I guess you're not being dishonest because you just didn't tell us about something. But I think like finding about all of this after the fact, people are gonna be like, girl, what? <laughs> girl, where? This is kind of the stuff that I've been going through. So long story short, I feel like crap. And obviously there's some other little hidden demons that I'm dealing with. Um, that I will just have to figure out on my own because I don't know if I'm comfortable sharing that. But I'm going to sure. find like, this apple. and Yeah, that, that cold apple that is too sensitive for your teeth or your teeth are too sensitive to eat is probably warm now <laughs> based on how long you've been out here. Watch some YouTube, edit a video, and go to my appointment. All right. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Well... That's that on that. That's that's all there is to it. Fascinating. Uh, fascinating rebrand. <laughs> How this content is any different than any other April and Reed content. I'm not sure, but we love a rebrand. For sure, for sure. Anyways, that's all I have time for today. Uh, thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video once again. If you want to try it for a month or your first month for 55% off, make sure to use the code down below so you can go do that. And 
yeah, if you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below, hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video, leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all of my social media, including my gaming channel, where I'm playing Stardew Valley, and on Twitch, where we react to silly internet things, and have a great day. Bye!